What's up everybody, it's Joe with JBlake Photo and in today's video we're gonna be talking about Photoshop on the iPad. Yeah. So if you've been following my channel for a while, uh, you know that I love the iPad, I love the portability, I love the power, I love the ability that we have to just kind of go out, uh, you know, on the road, on the trail, in the airport, in the office, you know, wherever, and have this just really powerful personal device just kind of in our pockets. Um, it does a ton. And if you've watched some of my videos on iOS 13 and some of the advancements that they've made on the iPad, you know that they're just doing more and more as time goes on. My iPad that I bought almost two years ago is so much more powerful now than it was just last year with iOS 13. Like most of you, I'm sure you're using Photoshop uh, all the time. Um, I'm pretty much living in Photoshop, Lightroom, and Final Cut. Like, that's pretty much all I use on my MacBook. And on my iPad, I'm constantly in Lightroom. I'm using LumaFusion instead of Final Cut because there isn't Final Cut on the iPad. Uh, sometimes I find myself in Adobe Rush CC, but not that often. So really I'm just Lightroom and LumaFusion. And on the iPad, you do have access to Affinity Photo and a couple of other applications that are really very powerful and are kind of eating Photoshop's lunch in the mobile space right now because the Photoshop apps that you can get on mobile, not that great. They are not really Photoshop. If if I want Photoshop, I'm reaching for my Mac. Like, that's where I'm going. Adobe announced this year that they would be porting Photoshop directly to the iPad using existing code. They weren't going to rewrite Photoshop for iOS. They were going to use the existing code and push it onto the iPad, which kind of tells you how powerful the iPad is. Uh, and now we're starting to hear reports of people who are using the beta of this software and kind of what we're expecting, what we're seeing. A recent report from John Gruber over at Daring Fireball says that uh, you know the engineering team is continuing to grow. It's gotten really big. They've got a lot of resources that they're applying to this and they're really looking at an aggressive timeline. But it looks like we're actually going to be getting a release very, very soon. But it doesn't sound like it's ready. So here are the things that it sounds like we're going to be getting and here are the things that it sounds like we're not. So this info comes courtesy of Bloomberg and 9to5Mac, as well as John Gerber over at Daring Fireball. And it's being described as a foundation, meaning they're gonna release it, it's gonna be missing a lot of stuff, and then they're gonna add it as time goes on. So when they said that it was going to be real Photoshop on the iPad, what they meant was it's going to be the desktop code, but not all the desktop features. So some of the things that we know we're going to be getting are the ability to interface with Apple Pencil. We know it's gonna have that as an option, uh, which means we should be getting full brush support. We're also gonna be getting layer and layer adjustment control, and we should be getting the user interface that we're accustomed to modified for a touch interface. So it should feel and look similar to what we're used to using in Photoshop, but tweaked to work on the iPad. And here's some of the things that it sounds like are not going to make it to the release of this kind of 1.0 product. Um, it's not gonna have filters. Let that sink in for just a second. Think about the filters that you use on a daily basis. I know a lot of us say, well, I don't run a lot of filters and it's understandable that it's not gonna run like alien skin, but blur, I mean, there's a lot of really basic features built into the filter components of Photoshop that won't be there that's notwithstanding the lack of scalability that you get by being able to add filters. So that won't be there at launch. It's also going to be missing uh, raw compatibility, meaning you won't be able to process raw photos through it, which I actually kind of find very surprising considering the fact that Lightroom has been working on the iPhone and the iPad for a couple of years now and has been able to process raw files without any trouble. So why wouldn't they just be able to port that same code, those components over into Photoshop? Who knows? But from what we understand, it will not process raw photos out of the gate. You'll have to probably process them in Lightroom and then transfer them over into Photoshop, which with iOS 13 and the share sheet and files, that won't be as hard, but it would have been nice to do it all in, all in one module. I mentioned earlier that it's going to support uh, brushes, but it looks like it's not going to support uh, customizable brushes or a, the ability to add your own brushes or use other textures for brushes. That, that doesn't look like it's gonna make it at launch. 
The other one that it's going to be missing is the pen tool. Um, I guess <laughs> I guess masking is going to be new and interesting. Um, so the pen tool won't be there. So for those of you who are just amazing at Bezier curves, it's not going to be in there for you first uh, first go. So those are some pretty important features. Those are some things that a lot of us use on a daily basis when we're using Photoshop. So it sounds like it's really only going to work for very specific workflows. Um, and it sounds like for me, Lightroom is going to continue to be the main photo app that I'm using on the iPad with Photoshop on the MacBook being my go-to for individual image editing until they add these new features, of course, which it sounds like they're going to do very quickly. So I wouldn't be too disappointed, but just know that the initial release of the iPad uh, version of Photoshop is not gonna be uh, the end all be all. There's gonna be a lot of iteration along the way. Adobe Rush, uh, very similar. Uh, we're slowly but surely seeing features being added to it. They just added recently the ability to do clip speed adjustments and uh, you know to speed up and slow down clips. So I, I think we're going to see slowly but surely a lot of these features hit the iPad and probably new features. Uh, no mention in any of the reports about any of the content aware tools uh, or, 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 or things like the stamp tool, some of the stuff that a lot of us use Photoshop for all the time. So no news there. Maybe no news is good news in those situations. Maybe we will see it. Um, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see when this thing gets released, which hopefully is going to be really soon that we can get our hands on it and start playing with it. I'm going to just say it right now. I'm pretty sure this is only going to be available for customers of uh, Creative Cloud. So you're going to have to have a Photoshop subscription to get this thing. So just be prepared for that. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if this is something that interests you. Um, do you plan on using Photoshop on the iPad? Or are you just Affinity Photo all the way on the iPad? Um, or are you still sticking with the Mac and Windows uh, desktop apps? Let me know down in the comments. I'd be kind of curious to see what you have to say. Um, and go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the like button. And hit the bell so YouTube will notify you when uh, I launch new videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.